Hello and welcome to Motoring Evolution. My name is Eddie and today we are at Stoney Park near Coventry for the 2021 Jaguar Spares Day. Now if you're not quite sure what the Jaguar Spares Days is all about, I'm about to tell you. Behind me, obviously Stoney Park. 300,000 square foot packed wall to wall with auto jumbles, park stands, car auctions, food, cars and coffee. This event is a big one and I'm about to take you on a tour of what it's all about. So join me. Without any further ado, let's do this. And the first stand that stands out, to be honest, is uh, Nick Martin. He's a car, uh, classic car wood trim specialist. Hi, Nick. So, Nick, um, obviously, the display here is absolutely beautiful. And some of the pieces here, I mean, this looks brand new, doesn't it? Now, some of these pieces, they're, they're not new, are they? Uh, very little of this is new. Yeah, uh, most of it is, is re veneered or re veneered is it a big process? How long does it take? It's quite a, it's quite a long process to do uh, the re veneer on which begins with the preparation, stripping off the old veneer, you have to go down to the substrate underneath, and then um, you have to prepare that, veneer it, clean it up before you put it back. A couple of days. Depends what it is. Um, I mean, if you consider the price involved, I mean, a set of wood for a Jaguar Mark 420G, that will cost you to leave there something around about 2016. So if you consider that as an amount of hours, that's an amount of hours. And it's normally done once in the car's lifetime, isn't it? So when it's manufactured, it would just degrade over the years and then you re you do your process of refresh. Well, the, they were never, when they were built, designed to be redone. Yeah. That's the thing. You know, now, they're not designed, nothing's designed to be uh, continuously recycled. So, so, yeah, but when you do a job like this, it's, it's a quite a difficult process in many cases because these were never designed to get out of the car and damage them, that's damaging them. So it's, a, it's, it's quite a difficult time to sort of so I've, I've obviously, I've, I've been involved in mechanical restoration, sub-assembly rebuild, builds, uh, detailing, but when it comes to chrome plating and wood and stuff like that, this is, this is, this is a different realm. And he's a uh, market leader in this, he's the expert, so sometimes people just have to give it to the professional to get it done. But the finished item that you get just puts that nice edge on the car. I always, I always think so. Yes, yeah. it's what you see when you get in the car. Yeah, personally. absolutely. Well, thank you, Nick. I've got plenty more stores to go around. It's a nice little insight into how the process works. So there you go, guys. Um, when it comes to wood trims and veneers and stuff like that, do you risk doing it yourself, or do you hand it over to uh, do you hand it over to a professional? Thank you, Nick. Thank Cheers. You. See you again. Bye bye. So. Here I am, I've come up to another stand. It's Parcel Chrome and greeting me is Rob, who is a chrome specialist, metalsmith. Yep. How's it going, Rob? Hello. So Rob, take me through how the, I mean, this stuff looks like jewelry. It's absolutely yeah. perfect. Yeah. And it's all the original stuff. All the original stuff, yeah. What's the oldest piece we have today? Uh, probably, I will say that. So that's the Mark II bumper. Mark II bumper. Yeah. Obviously, we've got the Mark II grill there. Yes. Yeah. And this is stripped back, is it? We strip, process? we strip it all the way back, yeah. back to base metal basically. Yeah. Um, blast all the backs here to get all the rust out and everything. Um, flat them off, get all, get all the ripples out the bumper before we start polishing them. Yeah. We polish them to a, a mirror finish. And then we heavy copper plate, which you can see on that, that there. Was absolutely beautiful, yeah. And we polish the copper. Yeah. And then nickel and chrome plate on top. Awesome. So the process takes roughly how long? Uh, something like that. You're probably talking 
five to six hours. Okay. It's, I, I, I tell you, it, so if, you, if you're gonna, I've, I've restored cars and I've played with chromas in the polishing aspect, but yes. sometimes it's best to just get it redone. Yes. Um, and you've got years and years of erosion. Yeah. Uh, is it, what's the biggest killer for chrome then, is it? It's road salt really. It's the road salt. Road salt really. Yeah, sure. Um, what we recommend is, if you sort of, uh, I mean we've got pieces at work, what we throw on the roof basically, let go to the elements. Yeah. Uh, we've had pieces there for 10 years now. Sure. We get them off the roof now and again, wipe them over, and then just give a, a wipe over with WD-40 on a clean rag. Yeah. Throw them back up and they're still there the same 12 weeks later, you know. Fantastic. So if you're going to do it guys, do it properly. Um, and we can probably chrome plate our bald heads at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Two baldies, you know. So that's fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Rob. We're going to go and have a look around. So, okay. Castle Chrome, guys, if you've got any uh, chrome parts for your car and you don't, and it's gone past its sort of life expectancy. At least you know it fits the car, you see. Exactly. And it'll be a direct fit. You know, these guys are the professionals. Don't go at it yourself. Get it done properly and it will seal the car for another 50 years. Exactly. So perfect. Cheers Rob. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Cheers. See you again. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye now. So we're now in the uh, car auction podium and I'm joined here with Richard who's selling his uh, beautiful Jaguar Mark 1 1956 Richard? 1956 yeah. The original paint? No it, was, it has been painted it's originally grey in colour. Okay yeah well let's let's uh, let's have a look it's on the market or it's going under the hammer for 17,500 that's what you Ideally, want. Ideally I'd like to get something like that if I can yeah basically okay. yeah. Brilliant. Okay so let's have a look. I've had it for about 10 years or so. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I've, I've basically done a few jobs on it since I've had it. Yeah. Um, it's um, been to the show here quite a few times, buying quite a few spare parts over the years. So Stoneley's helped? Very much so, definitely. Yeah, uh, things like headlamps, they're really hard to get for this particular model. Yeah. Came here, managed to buy all those bits, um, lots of other components, sort of service items, that kind of thing. It's been, it's been a really useful uh, resource for me over the years. Fantastic. Um, any mechanical problems? Um, yeah, there's been a few things over the years. Uh, brake issues, I've had to buy things like brake uh, overhaul kits. Sure. Um, yeah, I've had quite a few things to do on it as I've had it. Like anything, I mean, it's, well, I don't know how many years that is, 56. Yeah, it's about a 60 year old car, so things wear out, things break. So, yeah, uh, lots to do with it. Basically. Yeah, but it's uh, the enjoyment of owning such a car. Definitely. It's got salt. It's, it's different to a car of today. You've got to work with this to drive it, haven't you? You have to, yeah. It's, it's like a gym workout yeah. when you drive it. It's yeah. quite heavy on the steering. And fun. Yeah, definitely. No, it's good fun, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been to Goodwood in it a few times for the revival yeah. meeting. It's an ideal sort of car for turning up at Goodwood with the family and the picnic. And uh, yeah. it sort of, uh, yeah, it really fits in with that whole kind of uh, revival scene. So, yeah. And the, the, the one thing that strikes me straight away is the, uh, the Bright work. It's some of the, the chrome work is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's, I've not done any had to do anything on the, on the chrome work at all since I've had it, other than just keep it polished. Yeah. Um, the previous owner, I think, spent quite a bit of time and money uh, on chrome work over the years. So yeah, and got all the original leather interior as well. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, all the original red leather interior. Yeah, yeah. So when it comes to restoring one of these cars, one of the biggest things is how, how far you go with the restoration mm. and you're stripping out the original leather and you're taking away that character and the smells and the oh, yeah. material. And this is all original and let's just check if it's got that, that old car smell. Oh definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's aromatherapy. It's aromatherapy, it? yeah. So you've got the you've got old tobaccos, you've got leather, you've got the wood trim, you've got the history and the heritage of this oh, car yeah. and you can smell it. And I guess that adds to the, the pleasure of driving this thing, doesn't it? Definitely. When you get in it, it's like stepping back in time in all senses, yeah. It's not just what you see, but yeah, what you hear and what you smell, definitely. Yeah. And the uh, so we've had a look around, we've gone up to a wood veneer specialist who does okay. the, the oh, yeah. How's the wood in this car? It's not too bad actually. I think it's definitely been off and and certainly been had some had some treatment on it yeah. over the years. Um, but thankfully, when I got it, um, it didn't need anything doing. I mean, the way they put these together is they're quite you know, well constructed. Sure. Um, yeah. I think it's quite an involved yeah, process of coach work, getting all this off yeah. and back on again. So yeah. not something I would have fancied having to do. So thankfully, it's uh, it's in good condition, which is which is good. We'd be sad to see it go today. I will be. Yeah, definitely. Moving um, on to another one. 
yeah, I, I kind of I need something a little bit smaller. Okay. Like, it takes up a, a little bit. Although it's a, it's a sort of compact saloon from a Jaguar perspective, it does take up a little bit of garage space. So. Yeah, I need to find something a little bit smaller, really. Okay. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed it sells today and the auction goes well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard. Yeah, this is a beautiful you. car. Thank you. Absolutely. No problem. Well, great to have met you. Thank you. Yeah, thank Take you care. very much. Bye. So, uh, the, another stall that we've just come up to is... Uh, BAS International. B BAS International. Uh, and I'm joined here by Jack. Yeah. Who, you're based in South Wales. You're based in South Wales. How's it going, Jack? Yeah. Very good. Thank so you. So you're a leather restoration specialist. We don't restore the leather, we restore the seats and the interior. Okay. So what we will do, we will manufacture every part for the interior yeah. of the Jaguars. Yes, Give us a seat, uh, an old seat, we will strip it, repaint it, re-leather it, re it. So it will be just as good, if not better, than when they left Jaguars. Wow. Um, now, I'm often asked about the smells of the new leathers. Do, does it come with that new, that sort of not as leather smell? Not as it used to be. It does. Connolly leather is a really nice smell. You can't get that in one leather. It's a different process. Okay. Is it a lengthy process? Um, I believe so. And it's a very expensive process. You can buy Connolly leather, the new protection for it, and it's four or five times the cost. Okay. So if I was to come to you with a car, do you have a, 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 a large selection of different colours and shades that we yeah, work with? We, we have the very entire bespoke. Yeah. It's very bespoke. We have the entire Jaguar range of colours, nice. as it would have been with you. Oh, fantastic. We manufacture all the colours. This one here, that's a light tan. And it's very limited and we manufacture that one. Yeah. All the vinyls, all the hard jewellers, the carpet, we manufacture that in-house and sell it to everybody else. So, we take the basic ingredients, make it, sell it. Oh, wow. It's, we, we buy very little. Nice. Most everything is produced. Yeah. And have you noticed a spike in business over the last, let's say, 10 years? As these cars start to get to that age group where the I've, leather is starting to wear and... Well, I've worked for the company for 37 years. 37 years. Wow. Since 85, and it's never dropped. Fantastic. It's always been a spike. We've always worked to a full capacity. We've never had a slow in the and it's great. Is there any period in the year where it spikes, or is it just a steady...? Uh, it spiked on the e 50th, it yes. spiked a bit on the 60th. Yes. The Mark II spiked when they celebrated. Every celebration seemed to be a small spot. Nice. The car's advertised, and people want it. Okay, so leather restoration guys are uh, based in South Wales. Uh, you're, you're going to the NEC this year. We'll be at the NEC. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So uh, we'll catch up at the NEC in Birmingham. Well, thank you very much, Jack. No problem at all. Good insight for that. Okay, so I'm on my rounds at uh, Stoneley and I've joined a good friend. Andy Weber from the JC. He's the events and all, uh, events and sponsorship. That's it. Yeah. Manager. Yeah. Events How's it going, sponsor, Andy? Sponsorship manager. I'll say it one day. Yeah. Um, so I, I've worked closely with with you uh, for the build up to Vista. So build up Vista, indeed. I mean, obviously, you worked on the X type side of yeah. things. We had a fantastic display of X types, which is really good to celebrate that model because it was so important for Jaguar. Um, but we don't tend to celebrate those models at, at events. So to have them there. It was absolutely fantastic. We had, you know, a great turnout of cars on the wall. So we had about 1,700 cars there, something like that. Uh, we had to stop selling tickets because of our COVID restrictions. Yeah. Um, but it was great. We could see some of the E-types there on the magazine yeah. in the background. Yeah. Uh, some of the X-types were in there as well. You can have a little flick through that. Yeah, like that. Sure. Uh, and the build-up for our event as well. It was. Um, we had a venue change. We had constant Zoom conferences. That I mean, it was originally pencilled in a clip. Blending, it was blending, yeah, and um, yeah, we had to move everything around. It uh, it did cause quite a few problems, but we got there in we the end. We got there, and what a day! You know, I had, uh, I think, I had about four months to organise an event, whereas normally I'd have about eight to nine months. So, but um, great, great day, wasn't it? Perfect day. Couldn't go any better. No, we uh, even the weather was kind to us up till four o'clock. So there's a there's a famous there's some famous footage of me holding on to. Passenger seat from XJ220 going around Vista Heritage, the aerodrome. No, it was it was great to have those cars yeah. out on track, going around. People could see them, yeah. hear them, and, and we, we're not used to that. Exactly. Um, 
and that's obviously because that's what this delay is to So it outworked really well for us. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. So the JEC, the Jaguar Fugest Club, worldwide club, started worldwide. Uh, 1984. 1984. Yeah. And particulars of the club, I mean, there's owners of cars out there, all models, and if they're looking for a club, what do they get out of them? So what sort of thing? So there's, there's numerous uh, members benefits which they can see online. Obviously, there's a monthly magazine as well. Oh, yeah. um, but also, you know, we have uh, seminars with Pirelli. We have Day in the Bay with Maguire's. We've got the Shell Fuel Card. Uh, we've got the discount with SNG Barrett. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Um, it's a family club. Family club, yeah. We're, we we went our own tours and, and, and driving days as well. So there's plenty of opportunity to get uh, to get out there and display your car. Um, the, the, the club is, is split up into um, a number of regions within the UK, so you can find your local region um, and then go to the local events with them with fellow Jaguar enthusiasts. Um, so it's yeah. quite a big technical aspect as well, so if you've got a Jaguar car and you, you're looking for a part or some technical advice, you can ask someone in the club. Yeah, we've got forums for all the models, we've got technical uh, experts for all the models, works really well for us. Um, so yes, you know, we, 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 one, one, one club fits all. That's perfect. Yeah. Thank you. I know you're a busy guy and today is absolutely, we, we must be in excess of about 3,000 people easily. I think so, I think, you know, the, um, the turnout's really good for this actually. Um, didn't know what to expect because of the COVID situation. But really good here today. Um, great to, um, to be invited along. We have our raffle car. This is beautiful. So you can win this car for just two pounds a ticket. Two pounds, come to the personalised place. Uh, so it's, um, it's a five litre V8 and the, the draw is at the NEC in a couple of weeks time. Okay. NEC Birmingham guys, uh, November the 12th to the 14th. Uh, this is drawn, the draw for this is on the 14th, on the okay. Sunday at the NEC Classic. Two pound ticket. Two pound ticket, this, this car could be yours. Five litre V8 Jaguar XK. Yeah. 2014, is it? Um, naturally aspirated, yeah. proper car. Uh, proper car, sounds fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, well Nick, thank you very much today, and it's great Good to see you again, Eddie. See you again soon. Yeah. Please like and subscribe if you like this sort of thing and I'll see you at the next video. Bye bye.